Well, Scorpio, it's April 2020, and <clears throat> what a roller coaster ride, eh? It's been absolutely incredible uh, what's going on. And it's interesting when we set the chart in motion, you will see that uh, this fourth house of your horoscope is very interesting. Saturn has just made its move here very, very recently for the first time in almost 30 years. So we don't like to see this combination, the Mars and Saturn. That can show a lot of frustration, but in your case, I'm going to make an exception. I have the feeling other than from around the third to the fifth, when the moon up here is swinging around into this very hard aspect of these two planets, that uh, in your case, it's going to be a very constructive time. I can see you really being more productive, actually. The reason I say that is because although these two planets are not ideally best together, especially because Mars is one of your main ruling planets in, in the Vedic system of astrology, Mars is your ruler, but modern astrology says it's the co-ruler. It's moving away here, as you can see from Saturn. Um, and there's just that opposition and a little later around the 15th, which I'm going to talk about later, it's going to come in between these two planets, which can, can trigger a little bit of frustration. You might be getting a bit of cabin fever. Who wouldn't under the uh, circumstances this lockdown? The other thing I'm seeing here for you, Scorpio, uh, as this full moon takes place here in your 12th house, a reevaluation of your approach to helping other people. Now, you may be in two minds. You want to help people, and if you don't, you're going to feel guilty about it. If you do, your partner or even your better judgment is going to go, why did I do that? So um, I think you're going to be a lot more stern with people. You're realizing that charity begins at home. Hello, these planets here in the fourth house. And um, you're going to be a lot more frugal, a lot more... Um, business-like in the way you handle your financial affairs. You see that transit here, the Venus opposition moon. This is the moon swinging back into that uh, finance sector. So your mind around the 12th, 13th will be on those matters. As it exits this second house uh, on the 13th and 14th, I think a whole new energetic is going to emerge here. Your mind will be tempted to go back to the past. I don't want you to do that, but it may be difficult because my feeling is you see it here moving into this conjunction of Jupiter and Pluto. Be careful not to try to exert too much power, force, or uh, impose your powerful personality on others. This is the third house in your thinking. You see here the Jupiter-Pluto, and then the moon moves into this area I told you around the 15th or 16th. Um, of the frustrating Mars-Saturn midpoint. I've been talking about this quite a bit. Fortunately, there's a triangular aspect to Venus in the eighth house and money that's owed to you or something that you've been waiting on uh, by way of uh, uh, your taxation or a breakthrough in the way money is being earned, even though the eighth house is not necessarily money earnings. You see Venus here looking at your seventh house of income. Venus is the planet of loss, but being in the eighth house, which is another negative house, actually makes this month a month where, surprisingly, you'll earn more money. That could also be the case for your partner. You see here, Venus is ruling the seventh house, and on the 20th, the sun moves into this Taurus area with Venus being in the second house to that house. This is the earning capacity of your partner. Some unusual occurrences take place in your marriage or your business partnerships during this period of the month. That's going to be much more highlighted after the conjunction of Mercury here in the sixth house, which is your service house, health, and day-to-day -day, uh, planning. You see, what I mean by this is on the 23rd, the moon enters right there, 23rd, the new moon phase next to Uranus. So something may happen Either your partner may decide on a new course of action that could take you by surprise, or you may decide to take a new course of action. And uh, that may surprise not just her or him, but it may surprise yourself because this would come from left of field. It's a really interesting month. There's the moon taking its, its new moon vitality into the eighth house. So here, these first few days after the new moon, 26, 27, Look at this love aspect here. Moon and Venus are always going to bring out that 
flavor of intimacy being in the eighth house. And I think that's a sweet combination, all notwithstanding the debilitation of, uh, sorry, what am I talking about? The eighth house, which is an what we call an accidental debilitation because the eighth house is the natural house of Scorpio. So you might want to communicate, but you may not get the breakthrough that you're looking for immediately. I would persist. And it shows us there on the very last <clears throat> day or two of the month, a return to that ascending node, the karma point in your horoscope, indicating and there in the ninth house, which is your belief systems, your spirituality, a way forward rather than trying to rely on your speech and your communication, the written word. This has more to do with an intuitive feel, understanding the feelings of your partner. And you notice there, just at the tail end of the month, when Mercury enters into this area, although I'm talking about an intuitive response to any problem you have in your relationships, Mercury will show that that communication can happen on a non-verbal level, even though it's a very verbal planet. Take a look at the new look, astrology.com.au site. I'm really proud of it. It's taken me ages. It, the last four years has cost me a quarter of a million dollars, folks. Yes, it is a social welfare program for you. Just joking. I enjoy doing it, but I have had a lot of problems. Now I'm pleased to say that we do have a site that is really something I'm proud of. A new look uh, weekly horoscope section and the new revitalized free natal report that's there for you. You can print it out, take a look at it, drop me a line, subscribe. And if you need a personal reading for what's coming in these troubled times, drop me a line as well. I'll be here absolutely happy to organize an appointment with you. See you next month. Take care. Stay healthy. Stay distant. I'll see you next month. Bye.